Good morning. As uh, Joe is want to say, it's I'm glad to to be here. It is good to be amongst familiar faces and to be able to hear his word proclaimed. If you would uh, turn to Ephesians five. In verse 22, Ephesians 5, verse 22. <laughs> Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and his church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. God tells us in his word that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Today's passage is no exception. I mean this passage this morning as encouragement and help to us this morning. But God gives the increase. And his word will not return unto him void. It will accomplish that which he sent it to do. I don't want the emphasis to be on wives and husbands, although wives and husbands are certainly a part of this passage and the instructions should be heeded for both husbands and wives. I believe this passage was even given by Paul as an encouragement to the Ephesians because he was giving it to show a picture of Christ and his church. Although I know I do not measure up as a husband, but it encouraged me because I know he did. Oh, that I might can remember this. But the reason I think he meant this all as encouragement is this. It says in the first chapter in verse 15 and 16 that when he heard of their faith in Christ, and their love to all the saints. He did not cease to give thanks for them, mentioning them in his prayers. He wanted them to know the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and the exceeding greatness of his power to believers. Really, this little epistle has all the doctrines of grace, as we call them, if you look through it in this short book. And it kind of culminates in into this passage with him giving the example of wives and husbands husbands as it pictures Christ and his church. So, wives, we read in Ephesians 5.22, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. <clears throat> we know that he has all might and he is Lord of all from Scripture. We know that from the Scripture he's the creator of all things. <coughs> He's the potter, we are the clay. He has been given, been given power over all flesh to give life to as many as God has given him, it says in John 17, 2. He died, rose, and revived that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living, Romans 14, 9. Matthew 28, 18 tells us that he has been given all power in heaven and in earth. It also says that one day every knee shall bow. But this says he is head of the church. It is a headship that is loving, caring, protective, 
forgiving, thoughtful, sacrificial, and more. As a head of the church, he works all things for the good of his church. Because it also says here, he is the savior of the body. The main way he is savior of the body is mentioned just a few verses down. He gave himself so, so that his church might live, that we might live. He is the protector. Psalms 33.20 says this, Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. He's the comforter. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. In John 15.26 He's the provider for the church. Ephesians 3.20 Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. He is the Savior of the body in all ways. He has done and always does what is best for his people. We read for, with the husbands now, Ephesians 5.25. It says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Again, we see this tells us that he gave himself for us. Christ died so that we might live. And this is my hope, that he died for me and took away my sins. But also, he is the king of glory, the creator of all things, yet he humbled himself and came down as a man so that we might be saved. He was here on this earth and did so without having anything. It says he had no place to lay his head. In Luke 9, 58 we read, And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. He was reviled and had people wanting to murder him. He had people lie on him. He had people spit on him and beat him. And yes, ultimately nailing him to a cross where he gave up the ghost. But he opened not his mouth. He sacrificed everything, even unto death. <coughs> and why? So that he might sanctify and cleanse it. From the context here, he did this by his death. And why did he do this? That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. What he done for me and what he done for his church has made it so that they will be with him where he is for eternity and be without spot or blemish. Now, this is what I had on, on Friday, what I've just given you. And uh, I, I found when preparing these messages during the week that I have some stupid thoughts. I'm sure none of you all have any stupid thoughts through the week. But uh, I was saying, Paul, is this all you have? Is this all you can come up with? I mean, I basically just read you what it said in these passages. I haven't really went into anything. But I went to sleep Friday night. And, you know, God didn't reveal anything to me in a dream or anything. But I woke up thinking about my message. And uh, God brought to my mind, he said, you know, basically this to me. You know, he, he brought it to my mind. Basically, keep it simple, stupid. It is, Christ is not simple. Salvation is not simple. But it is simple as this, that salvation is of the Lord. It's all of Christ. This is all about. <clears throat> this is all about that Christ. It's about Christ and Him alone. It's about who Christ is and what Christ accomplished. Salvation is not simple, but it's as simple as that. There's another term here that is used even in our book here. It's singleness or singular. It's simple because it's all about Jesus Christ and He fits everything together. And what does it tell us? Let's turn over to chapter four, verse four. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. <clears throat> all things flow from Christ. All gifts come from him. We are in Christ and Christ is in God. This is like uh, Earl used to say, you know, we're in Christ, and Christ is in God. We're all one. 
All things flow from Christ and all gifts come from him. What is precious is Christ. It's all about Christ, in Christ, by Christ, for Christ, and to Christ. I have to keep my message on Christ and not make it about man or myself. Because of who Christ is and what he did for the church is why wives should submit to their own husbands and why husbands should love their wives. We should look to Christ in all things. But this is not just for husbands and wives to do. Certainly there is some instruction here for husband and wives, but this is about Christ and his church. If you are in Christ, you are a part of his body. What does it tell us in verse 21? Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. That is not just husband and wives. It's all of God's people. But we also read in chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. I'll read that to you. <coughs> Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. What Christ has done, he has done for every believer because we are talking about is Christ and his church. His body looks to Christ and him crucified and we never get over that. The scripture tells all of his people that we should love one another. And it says things like esteem others better than yourselves. Be kind. Have charity. Be hospitable. Because he has been this way with us and for us. He has closed up, clothed us with his righteousness, covering our own nakedness with his righteousness. I am fully righteous in God's sight in Christ. That is an amazing thing to me to think about. It is not just as if I've never sinned. It is I am right in God's sight in Christ because I'm hid in him. In the rest of this book, we see instructions to children, fathers, servants, that can be employees and masters or bosses. So this is to all of God's people. He gives faith to all of his church, to each and every one of us that are in Christ. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's all about Christ and what he has done. So then, how do we do these things? How do we look to Christ? How do we submit? How do we love one another? We do this by the power of his might because he equips us. Let's look at uh, chapter 6 in verse 14. And it tells us previous to, to verse 14, it says, Put on and take unto yourselves the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. This is a battle, and we need the battle garments God has given us. But he supplies them. It tells us our loins girt about with truth. This is Christ. From here to here, it covers all the essentials. Christ is the middle of everything. He holds everything together. This is Christ. Next, we have the breastplate of righteousness. My prote protection is his righteousness from any and all darts that might come at me to protect me. Oh, that I might be found in his righteousness. Next, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Shoes on and ready is what this seems to indicate to me. Be ready to proclaim and defend God's word. Taking the shield of faith. Faith, God's gift to us, which allows us to trust him and to see Christ as he is. Faith will help protect every part of you. Believe God in what he said is, says in his word and you will find safety there. What he has said is true because he is truth. Next, the helmet of salvation. This is Christ too. Christ is the head. But, you know, we can see this as, as our hope in, you know, Christ is our salvation. That's our hope. The, that hope is Christ will return to take me where he is one day. What God has done is forever. This will keep me from losing my head or going into deep despair. When the arrows start flying at, at my head, he saved us to the uttermost, and no one can pluck us out of his hands. And then last we see here the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 
the gospel we can defend and go, go to on the offensive attack. This word will help us to lay blows to lies. It can also be used to cut to the heart by his spirit. It pleased God through the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. I've been saying this a, a lot lately, but I think it's worth being said. We must look to Christ. By his gifts and his revelation from his word, he allows us to submit and to love. It is all because of what he did for us. We love him because he first loved us, and we also love one another. And all of this is the praise to the praise of the glory of his grace, and that is in the face of Jesus Christ. And I pray that this has been encouragement to you as much as it has been to me. Roy, will you lead us in prayer? We thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we have of being out here this morning and these others which has come out to hear your truth proclaimed. We thank you, Lord, for this word that we've already heard. We ask that you would guide and direct in each and everything that is done here. Be with Walter and Joe as they come and bring us more truths as we desire to hear it, Lord. And we ask that you would guide each and every one which has come out here tonight today and give them safe traveling mercies home and bring them back again at the point of time that we might hear more of your word proclaimed. These blessings we ask in Christ's name. Amen.